Located in the medulla oblongata of the brain is the autonomic nervous system, and the autonomic nervous system is the one that's responsible for regulating involuntary functions such as heart rate and blood pressure. So the heart is influenced by the autonomic nervous system, and as I said, the autonomic nervous system is responsible for controlling biological functions. They're divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is mediated by epinephrine, which is a hormone that is released by the adrenal gland. The action of sympathetic stimulation is an increase in heart rate, an increase in cardiac output, and there's also going to be a slowing down of digestion as well as dilatation of the pupils. And these are all responses com commonly referred to as fight or flight response or stress response. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, is mediated by acetylcholine, which is the chemical secreted as a result of stimulation of the vagus nerve. And the major effects of parasympathetic stimulation would be slowing down of heart rate, a decrease in blood pressure, enhancing of digestion, which are all part of the rest and digest response. Now, these, of course, are going to exert their effects on the heart. And what are the effects on the heart generally? Well, the effects on the heart are going to be of two kinds, but let's focus on the sympathetic response at the moment. Chemical that mediates the action of the sympathetic nervous system is norepinephrine or epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. So what happens when adrenaline or norepinephrine is released? Well, it enters into several types of doors, so to speak, or receptors. And these receptors could be classified as alpha receptors, beta receptors, or dopaminergic receptors. So let's take a look at the alpha receptors. If norepinephrine enters into alpha receptors, what are the effects? Well, there are two types of alpha receptors, alpha-1 and alpha-2, but we will focus on alpha-1 receptors because these are the ones that are going to be numerous in vascular smooth muscle, or muscles of blood vessels. And their effect, once epinephrine is going to enter into these receptors, is going to be vasoconstriction. So what is the effect of vasoconstriction to blood pressure? It increases blood pressure. So therefore, the release of epinephrine or norepinephrine uh, entering into alpha-1 receptors is going to result in an increase in blood pressure. Now, beta receptors. These beta receptors are of two kinds. There's beta-1 and beta-2. Now, we can remember beta-1 and beta-2 because we have one heart and two lungs. So therefore, beta-1 is going to be much more abundant in cardiac cells, whereas beta-2 are more abundant in vascular and bronchial smooth muscle. So what is the effect of stimulation of beta-1 receptors? Beta-1, as I said, is going to be abundant in the heart. And therefore, it's going to result in cardio acceleration or an increase in heart rate. So if we have beta-1 effects, there's going to be an increase in heart rate. That is known as a positive chronotropic effect. So beta-1 stimulation results in positive chronotropy or an increase in heart rate. And the other action is going to be an increase in the force of cardiac contraction. Force of cardiac contraction is also known as positive inotropy. So therefore, beta-1 stimulation is going to cause an increase in force of contraction or a positive inotropy. Now let's take a look at beta-2. Beta-2 receptors, as I said, are going to be abundant in the lungs, in the vascular and bronchial smooth muscle of the lungs. And therefore, the stimulation of beta-2 receptors by norepinephrine or epinephrine is going to result in vasodilation 
as well as bronchodilation. Now, another type of receptors are your D1 receptors or your dopaminergic receptors. And these receptors are going to be abundant in renal, splanchic, as well as coronary and cerebral um, cells. And therefore, their main action is going to be to relax renal vasculature, smooth muscle, and therefore it will result in an increase in urinary output. In summary, the net effects of orthoreception are going to be vasoconstriction. Beta receptor stimulation will result in two things. Beta-1 stimulation will result in an increase in heart rate as well as increase in the force of cardiac contract. And beta-2 effects will cause bronchodilation. This concludes our discussion on the cardiac innervation of the nervous system. Thank you.